Hi, and welcome to organizing your special education documents, keeping your head above water. My name is Gloria Reese. I'm a parent. I have a son who's been uh, with WASTEP since pre-K, so that's around three-ish to now. He will be exiting the transition program. He's 22. I'm also um, a WASTEP Community Advisory Committee board member. And in the background, assisting me with this presentation is Janet Cano, and she's our WASTEP Executive Director and just a wonderful partner in this journey. So I wanted to include this quote. Um, Until you have a kid with special needs, you have no idea of the depth of your strength, tenacity, and resourcefulness. Um, actually, Janet found this quote, but it's just wonderful because you never think about this as a parent, but somehow we wind up here and yeah, it just kind of shows you who you can be. Gloria, would you like to tell them a little bit about your child? Sure. Um, like I said, my son is PJ and he uh, was diagnosed with a with special needs at around two and a half to three years old, and that's when we came into Walk Step. Um, so my kid actually, so he is involved with the school, the educational piece, but we are we he, we've been uh, members of regional centers since that time as well. So he had both services, and then he's got some complex medical issues as well. So I will be including all of those in this presentation um, and how we're going to organize the document. So I think it's really important to keep your documents, your most current documents in a binder. And we'll go over this binder in a little bit. And we'll look inside and kind of talk about some ideas of how to organize. We've included a table of contents just for organizational purposes. And you will see we've included a document about all about my child. And we'll look at that. Um, we've also included other important documents, like I had mentioned earlier, kind of school related, and then regional center related, and medical related. Um, and there's other important documents that we'll have, and we'll talk about where we can put those and just some ideas about how to keep the things that are necessary with you and organized. So all about my child. It's just a current picture of your child, um, a list of your child's strengths or favorite things. You're gonna see mine in a minute. I'm very simple. Um, I know people that can get really creative and just do beautiful things and answer a lot of questions, fill it with a lot of information. You'll see mine is really basic. And we just like to do that to keep the focus of the meetings that we're at. It's about our child. And sometimes we're nervous going in, and sometimes it becomes real intense and real paperwork driven, but ultimately, we bring it right back to our child and that's why we're there and we're all there to discuss and give our child the, the best tools that he or she needs to be successful and we want to just include the great things that we'd like to share about our child so we don't forget them again in these meetings that can be full of emotion like i said here's mine can't get more simple than that. That's my son, PJ. Um, way back when, like I said, he's 22 now, but I think in the first one at him at the barbecue with all the barbecue on his sweatshirt, I think he's around maybe seven. And I believe the other one, he's probably five or six, probably six. I think that's first grade. But yeah, I kept mine really simple. And at that time, he was the fastest kid. He was so fast, I had to run after him all the time. Um, and fun, he's just, he's 
still a fun guy and he still absolutely loves music and singing. So I just wanted to make sure that those were at the forefront of all of my needs. So documents to keep, school related. Um, we think it's a great idea to have your IEP, your most current one, but also your previous year, just in case you want to refer to it during your IEP or another meeting, in case you need to compare the goals or anything that's in there, just to take out a question, you know, a fear of like forgetting something that you might want to ask or to have the team review. Also, if applicable, an, individ an individualized transition plan or the ITP. Um, another thing that you might want in there is your psychoeducational evaluation, which is usually done every three years. So you just have your most recent in your binder. Also, other evaluations, your most recent would be in the binder. Um, so also a list of key school personnel, like their name, just their contact information. If you have a case manager, um, which would be in some cases like me, the lead teacher of your child's program, you know, or the provider and other service providers. You just want whoever's working closely with your child, you want their information in the binder. Also, if you are like I am, like my son is, a regional center client, then you would want that in there as well. So you would have their IPP, which is their individual program plan, their most recent, and you can have their pre previous year for reference if you'd like. Um, also, any evaluations done from regional center. We're just focusing on this most recent. So we want your binder to be as light as possible. We know that we come across so much paperwork, so hopefully it will be light, maybe it won't, but we suggest obviously, you know, definitely your most current and then one previous year. And then here are the same thing, list of key people, their names, their contact information, your service coordinator, sometimes they change, um, you know, so you just wanna have that at your readily available to you any therapist that you might have, you'd want their information here. So with the medical piece, you know, we'd love to have your, your immunization record right there because a lot of times you need to refer to that. And I remember I forgot it a few times in doctor's appointments or sometimes regional center wants it, you know, you'd have it right here. Um, any a list of any medications that your child is on so you don't forget um if your child has allergies you can include that um my son has celiac disease so he has dietary restrictions so we just want to have that information ready at the ready also, just any concerns or, or needs that your child might have that stand out that you wouldn't want to forget. You know, that's the worst feeling, right? When you drive away and you're like, oh, darn it, I wanted to mention that. You just have that stuff in this binder. Also, a list of key medical personnel. I mean, you might just have a primary care physician, but in my case, we had specialists, we had neurologists, we had dietitians, um, endocrinologists. So it can, become to a lot of information and it's just really helpful to all have it in in your hands also case managers social workers etc just like i mentioned all the people that work closely with your kids sometimes it becomes a lot you know it goes out it ripples and there's quite a few people that can be working with your child at any given time also your private private therapist and we have had that too. I mean, oh my goodness, just a lot of information. So if applicable, put that information in here too. So any other documents, um, just information from other agencies that you may work with. Um, I know when my son was really small, he was receiving like ABA and uh, 
just other services from Gallagher. I don't even know if they're still around, but yeah, I mean, I would have that information. And then you collect, inevitably collect a lot of business cards along the way. So you might want those with you again. So if you were talking to somebody or you want to ask a question about an agency, there's the card right there. Or a person that you met or a business or like Little League. I know at our transition fair, you come across people that are doing some really great stuff and you might get a card. You don't want to lose that card. That's terrible. Or like it's at the bottom of your purse and you forget. Um, and also contacts of other parents that you meet because you will meet some phenomenal people and you don't want to forget. So not all of them would have a business card, but you know, just be able to write their name down. Um, also flyers, you'll come across flyers of things that you'll want to attend and you don't want to forget. It's so easy. Our lives become really busy and you can keep those flyers in this binder. And also I suggest you always have some blank paper in there, again, just for the notes to write down the contacts of the parents you meet or agencies or whatever, if they don't have a card that you can stick in there, notes can become a parent's best friend also. So now we're gonna take a look at the binder. And this is mine, um, it's not fancy. I would like it to be fancy, but mine is just really basic. And, um, you're going to organize it. This is your binder. So you will organize it the way you see fit. We've included ideas in ours and you can use our model. But at the end of the day, it's what works for you. So I just included some things that I have found. Um, like when I mentioned the business cards, there's a sheet that holds business cards. And it holds quite a few, but you can double them. You can put one and then one behind it. And then you can double the amount of cards that you can put in here at any time. Um, also, just the clear sleeves to keep your documents clean. If you have children, you know that food ends up, you know, coffee spilled, juice, whatever, it just helps. Also, there's uh, these kinds of sleeves that have pockets. So you can stick things that you might've got in a meeting just in there. And for me, the goal, like I would always collect documents and information, but it's usually at home sitting on the floor in front of the TV where I'm actually organizing it and putting the stuff where I want it to go. But these kinds of things just help you not lose the stuff that you may have got in a meeting. And then you can always get these dividers and tabs and just organize it the way that works for you. And then I have found this to be a real lifesaver. It's like the one with the zipper on it because sometimes I'm really just saying bye and I'm like, have whatever information I just got and I don't wanna lose it. And that's, that would be heartbreaking too to have put something in here and then it fell out along the way. So this zipper thing is wonderful. And then, like I said, you go home and then you can put the cards where you want them or whatever information that you have. And then there's a flyer back here, you know, that I got. You put that wherever you want. And then back here is where I would probably have some blank paper just for any notes. And this could be just a, a holding point, too. Like, I know a lot of you probably use your phone for things or you take pictures of business cards and put them in your phone, which is awesome, but until you get home to be able to do that, you can keep everything here. And that way, if you're like me, I mean, I would have a little anxiety sometimes and despite my best intentions can forget a really important document. And that this just takes some of that out. So thank you so much for attending today. I hope this was really helpful. And yeah, good luck. Good luck on your journey to organization. Thank you. Thank you so much, Gloria, for sharing your wisdom and insight. Um, I know it's greatly appreciated. So thank you, everyone.